Hello everybody, welcome to another watercolor tutorial. We are painting an abstract cabin painting, or I wouldn't say abstract, it's just a very loose painting that is inspired by Art by Lisma. Uh, so I don't think this is going to be a very long one, but I always think that and then, you know, I draw things out way too long. But uh, I am using my new palette that I have been using for all my July tutorials. And uh, I love this palette. It has 100 different colors. They're so, so pigmented in comparison to my palette that I've used for the last three years. I highly recommend it. And it's pretty affordable for having a hundred colors that include metallic and eggshell and neon um, as well as regular ones so i have the link in the description it gives me a little bit of commission if you purchase using my link um, so yeah if you're looking for new watercolors then i really encourage this one <clears throat> anyways we're starting off here with the sky and it's a very it's like the sky is barely visible, uh, and what I mean by that is the colors of the sky are barely visible. So I'm trying to show that or portray that. I'm not using tape today, or at least in this painting. And that is without any particular reason. It's also, it's absolutely bucketing down today. We've had so much rain recently and my husband's at work and I'm off work. So this was like, I did not have an excuse not to paint. Um, so I'm going to try and paint all of August's tutorials today, which I realize is ambitious, but it's been done before. It can be done again. So I'm covering about half of this piece of paper with uh, like the top half with kind of a bluish gray um, color. And just intensifying, like adding these kind of wispy, cloudy features to random parts of the sky to make it look like there's clouds in the sky and that it's not just this blob of blue. Um, It doesn't have to be anything special. You just wisp your brush and hope for the best. I just realized that I forgot to bring myself a paper towel. So I grabbed some toilet paper. The benefits of painting in the bathroom, I tell you. Okay, I'm gonna stop with the sky before I mess it up. Uh, I'm gonna move on to the bottom here. So the bottom is just going to be all grassy. So I'm gonna be using uh, like a, a very light green or like a, even a lime green for this portion. That is a little too bright. Yeah, so with these these colors, they're so, so opaque. And I'm not used to that. I'm not painting with, I'm not used to painting with such opaque colors because my previous palette was, was not like this. So it's been um, a little bit of an adjustment, but a good one. Like it's, it's great that this is the issue that I have now. I really don't want it to be this bright. I'm not using, 
I'm still getting used to these colors because they, um, when you wet them, there's a slightly different color than when they're dry. So I'm just trying to find the right shade and right amount of watering down, I guess you could say. So I'm grabbing some darker greens here for the bottom. I'm going to go a little closer so that you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. But I'm just adding these like darker green features at the bottom. So we're going to be painting a cabin here somewhere in a moment. And I'm adding like random patches of green. Again, this is supposed to be a very loose painting, which is why I'm not really <clears throat> I don't have the best instructions because I'm really just experimenting myself. So have fun with it. Like, don't, uh, don't feel like you need to do exactly what I'm doing. Sorry, I'm going to zoom back out because you can't see half the things I'm doing. Um, I'm switching. So I was just using my size 14 that whole time, but I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. I'm using a size 1 here. And this is simply to add some like more grassy details to the bottom because I don't want the bottom to look like this perfectly straight line. If I wanted that, then I would have taped, I would have taped the borders. Uh, so I'm just adding those features. And I'm actually going to paint some trees. So I'm adding black to darken my green. <clears throat> actually, I should paint my cabin first now that I think about it. So instead I will, since I already have the green on my brush, I'm just going to add some shrubs on the horizon line here. I've been really digging these um, more loose abstract paintings recently. I, I always struggled with um, just letting go and, and I still do like even the, even though these are very loose paintings I still spend too much time on certain details because I want to get them perfect but it's a really great way to kind of reset your painting style in a way <clears throat> if you do it enough times and they're usually a lot quicker and the result is so neat it just looks effortless even though you probably put in a lot of time <clears throat> or at least I I put in a lot of time into these uh even though it may look like it was just this quick thing um <clears throat> so just 
experiment with it. Like you don't have to necessarily follow exactly like where I'm putting my shrubs or whatnot. Do what, what feels right for you and your painting. So I need to paint my little cabin, it's going to be right here, I'm going to take brown watercolor naturally and it's going to be super simple this cabin like we the intention is not to be um, very precise because like I said this is supposed to be more of an abstract pa uh, loose painting I just added some black for the roof portion the other thing I like about these kinds of paintings these loose paintings is it really gives you the freedom to be very very creative uh, with your painting like a lot of the times I struggle with inspiration for paintings for tutorials um, and these give you a little boost of inspiration I give they give me a boost of inspiration at least because oftentimes I turn this into my own Okay, this was still a little bit wet. I should have waited because now this, my cabin is bleeding into everything else. Not ideal. Um, so what I'm going to do, since it's still wet, is add some grassy features to it. Oops. I'm gonna have some pines coming up this way and I'm really impatient, so I'm just gonna paint them now. Even though I should wait until my cabin is dry and complete for that matter. Um, so, like I said, I'm working on August's tutorials today. So these, all the ones I paint today are going to be released in August, which is nuts to me. Like, oh my, it, it's sad that I'm already working on August because it feels like the summer is, like it just started. In reality, it has just started, but it's going to go by so quickly. Um, and my goal is like, I'm, I'm going to be painting hopefully again this week, I'll do September and that is wild to me, but I'll be painting September. That, that means that my child will be born if I didn't release that sketchbook Sunday before this tutorial, then some people are going to be very confused. <laughs> but, oh well. Anyway, the point why I said that was because if I'm working on September, then like I'm already going to be painting fall tutorials, which is pretty crazy to me. I really need to let this cabin dry because it's kind of messing up the rest of my painting. Uh, also, these guys faded a little bit more than I wanted them to. Okay, that, I have to fix that because that is going to cauliflower. 
for sure. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry before I continue. I'm grabbing my quadruple zero now brush. Oh, this is not dry, oh my gosh. I have to extend my roof because my cabin was not dry before and it has bled into the surrounding areas. Oh, man. That is very annoying when I do things like that. Here, I'll go a little closer. I have to be careful. I don't know why I painted these trees. Like I should have just waited until this cabin was dry and complete. That's what I do. Switching to a slightly bigger brush. Just filling in this roof. Good enough, good enough. And back to my trees. So I wanna make them a little bit more pronounced here. So I've added a bit of black. So on my Instagram, I share more uh, like personal life stuff on Instagram. Not that I do it that often, but I do. And I asked y'all if you would like to see a vegetable garden tour. Not on the channel, but on my Instagram. And 100% of you said yes, so which I was very surprised about because typically, I don't know, people are a lot more honest on there and they're like, nope, stick to watercolor stuff. But uh, so anyway, I'm waiting for this rain to kind of let down a little bit so I can go and do that. But I think... The fact that it's not letting out is a sign that I should not be doing that and that instead I should just get power through these tutorials, you know? I really don't like when I do things like this where I accidentally smudge paint on the edge. Oh, you didn't even see me clean that up. That's okay. Okay, so I am happy with my cabin and my trees. Now we're going to add a fence to complete this look. My fence is going to be mostly black, but I'm going to mix some brown into it. And I'm using my quadruple zero. So I'm gonna have part of my fence is going to come up. And again, guys, super abstract. So don't worry about being hyper precise here.
I kind of wish I added some grassy patches there because it looks a little bit. There we go. It's a little bit better. And then I'm going to have another one coming out this way. So we'll have a post here, post here, maybe one here. And the, the closer they go to the viewer, the bigger you want to make them, like longer, thicker, etc. But again, don't be too caught up on those details. Because it is supposed to be abstracty, loose, and I think I have achieved that. I always feel like I need to add something to the sky because it always looks bare to me, but um, I'm not going to because I always do. So it's going to be nothing this time. Anyways, that's our loose cabin. I really, really like how this turned out. I hope you did too. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video and I will see you in the next